Hello, we are live. Hopefully I will get a chance to save this afterwards. We are here at Hug 18. It is a full room. It's not a very big room, but it's full. Um, and we are talking all about creative marketing strategies for Instagram, so enjoy. I won't be able to answer comments because obviously I'm too busy talking to people here. Love you guys. Welcome. What a day we've been having. Like I said again, we had a hug in the beginning. We had some laughs. We had some good lunch. I know everybody's waiting for the wine and the beer later. I know we've had a long day. So much to process all at once. But this is what it's all about. Giving ourselves the tools to learn more, to take our business to the next step. Uh, we've heard from all kinds of industries, all different types of tactics. But with great pleasure, I get to introduce Jen Harmon, and as you can see, a uh, true testimony to her craft already, Instagram living this event as we go. This is what, it, what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, staying true to your craft and perfecting it and pushing it even further. So without taking too much of your time, Jen Harmon. Thank you. I love that all of you are here. I'm so excited. I was like, no one's going to come to this session. So I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, I know it's a small room, so for those of you who are standing, thank you. If you want to get comfy on the floor and you know, kind of peek through the tables or something, uh, you know, you're welcome to do so as long as you're comfortable. Uh, we are live on Instagram. I do a ton of Instagram lives. I think it's the best thing ever. We're not going to talk a lot about Instagram live today, unfortunately, uh, but we are going to go through a lot of things uh, to look at growing your audience, driving conversions, and how you can use Instagram effectively for your marketing. So. Helps if maybe if I turn this thing on, let's try that. There we go. I love technology. So a little bit about me for those of you who don't know me. I am from here in San Diego. Yeah, do you guys want to come sit in the middle? If you're comfortable, just come on up here and come sit in the middle if you don't want to stand the whole time. Totally. All this open space is just waiting for you guys. Come on. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> exactly. Break the rules. So I am from here in San Diego. Uh, so it was, you know, a really hard commute for me this morning. I came all of, like from Script Ranch, so it was really easy for me. Um, anybody here not from San Diego? All right, we got one, two, three, a couple. Awesome. More people. <laughs> so I am uh, recognized as the world's forefront blogger on Instagram marketing. I've been blogging about Instagram for about five years now. I started out blogging about Instagram when nobody else was really blogging about it. Uh, I started out just saying, hey, this is what you do. This is how you can do it. Let's kind of figure it out as we go. And in that process, I've now written well over 100 blog posts on my own website dedicated to Instagram marketing. I do a regular um, contribution from Social Media Examiner as well as other guest posts, podcasts, that sort of things. I've been interviewed on uh, local TV stations. I've been interviewed on um, radio stations out of LA and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I've also written Instagram for Business for Dummies. I did have the book signing going on out in the uh, kind of common area while lunch was going on, but I don't think a lot of people knew about it. So if you do want a copy of the book, I still have more copies. Um, come see me afterwards and we can head over to the main wall, or main hall and we can get copies of that book if you guys want copies of that. So today, before we get started, I do want to take just a couple minutes and kind of talk you guys through why Instagram is so awesome because I can, I love Instagram and I can sit here and talk to you for the next six hours um, about all the crazy cool things you can do, but it kind of helps if you know why it's valuable. So show of hands, everybody has an Instagram account, okay? Do you have an Instagram business account? Ah, see? I will convert you by the time you leave this room. So why I love Instagram, it's one of the strongest community tools. Uh, I was actually asked this question uh, earlier at the book signing portion, why, you know, why I kind of fell in love with Instagram. If you guys want to grab seats on here in the middle, come on in and join the people in the middle if you don't want to stand. <laughs> Um, but Instagram is really about community. We already talked a little bit in the opening keynote about those meaningful interactions that Facebook is pushing. Facebook owns Instagram. You can assume there's going to be a similar uh, preference for meaningful interactions. And that's why I love Instagram. It really is community. I have friends that I met four, five, three years ago through Instagram um, that are either colleagues in the space, customers, clients of mine that are now my best friends. I go and stay with them when I travel, they come and stay with me when they travel, and we have these amazing relationships because we liked somebody's photo on Instagram. So there's an amazing capacity to really convert just an average follower into that brand loyalist, into a, you know, a high paying customer if you're using it well. 
One of the things everybody complains about is there's one link on Instagram, the link in the bucket. Everybody hates it. I love it. I think it's the best thing ever. And I do not even want them to change it because it forces marketers to A, be creative. You can't link drop. But B, it means people that click on that link want to click on that link. They're not scrolling through LinkedIn and accidentally clicking on the wrong thing. They didn't happen to scroll through Facebook and the browser kind of froze and they ended up tapping on a video they didn't really want to see. If they've seen something in your profile or in the feed and then they go and click on your profile photo and they get to your profile and they click on the link and they end up on your website, they've already done three or four actions to get there. They want to be there. That is high quality traffic. You may not get as much traffic from Instagram as you get from other social media, but the quality of traffic is unsurpassed. So you can absolutely drive traffic and conversions. You just have to know how to do it effectively. And Instagram actually has some of the highest engagement rates. Now, yes, it is in single digits, but I will take 3% on Instagram over an eighth of a percent on Twitter, or maybe a half of a percent on Facebook, um, maybe 1%. So if you can get those engagement rates that are triple or more what you're getting on other social media, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? All right, so I asked about the Instagram business profiles. That's what we're gonna talk about. I really want you guys to understand why a business profile is important to you. And so we're gonna just take a couple minutes to focus on this, especially since a lot of you don't have a business profile set up. You do need a Facebook business page. This is required, Facebook owns Instagram. So to do a Instagram business profile, you actually have to link to your Facebook business page. This is required. They do it for two reasons. Um, one is ad management. Even if you don't want to run ads, doesn't matter. You still need to connect it. You will get ad capacity because you've connected the two platforms. And it actually takes information from your Facebook business page to populate some of the content on your Instagram business profile. So you do have to have a business page on Facebook to have a business profile on Instagram, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can't have three Facebook pages linked to one Instagram account or vice versa. You have one Facebook page to one Instagram account. What you get, and I'm gonna show you a screenshot of what uh, a business profile looks like on the next slide, but you get contact buttons. These are golden. I know people that have converted hundreds if not thousands of dollars in sales within hours of upgrading to a business profile because the contact button was now available on their profile. They can call, email, text, or get directions. So that one link that you have that everybody complains about, now you have the potential to have it said you can have three of the four buttons on your profile. So if someone's scrolling through and you say, hey, go click on the, you know, the contact button on my profile, they can jump right over there and hit the phone button, the call button, and actually use their phone to phone you. Shocking, I know. But they can call you. Guess what happens when your client, a potential client calls you? You're talking to them. You're answering their questions. You just solved their problem. They're going to buy like that because they didn't have to think about it. They didn't go, oh, I'll, I'll do that when I get back home. You know, oh, I'm going to do that when I get back from lunch. And then they forget about it. And then they think about it two weeks later. And then they have a bunch of questions. And they went and talked to some other people. And now they've done a whole bunch of research. And now they don't really know what they want to do. And they're more confused than when they got started. You've lost that sale. Whereas if they could have just picked up the phone and called you right there, you would have closed it immediately. So having those contact buttons is paramount to being able to close sales on Instagram. You get the industry listing. This is something that pulls from your Facebook profile. So if you don't um, like what shows up on Instagram, you have to go and change it on Facebook. So whatever you have your profile on Facebook listed as in terms of your industry, your type of business, that's what's automatically gonna populate into Instagram. You don't get a choice. Uh, In-app analytics is amazing. It's not perfect. It's not a lot like everything you would want, but it's a really good rundown of the information you need to know. We don't have time to dive into analytics today. I've done whole hour long sessions on just Instagram analytics, um, but absolutely those are very, very valuable to be able to go in and see what's working and what's not working and be able to use that to better craft your content for your audience. You have the ability to boost posts. You can take a post anywhere in your Instagram account and boost that as an ad to the Instagram audience of your choice. You can do custom audiences, all those sorts of things, just like you would do when you boost a Facebook post. And most importantly, Yes, we will talk about the algorithm. There is no negative impact on the algorithm if you upgrade to a business profile. I promise you. That changes, I'll be the first person to tell you. But there is no negative impact. You may see a slight drop in reach or engagement when you switch. That will recover within usually about two to three weeks. The same thing happens 
if you switch from a business profile back to a personal profile, you'll see that initial kind of drop. And it's really more Instagram's kind of being like, oh, what you up to over here? Why are you mixing things up? Are you sure you wanted to do that? And so they kind of pull back the reins a little bit, but it's not necessarily a permanent thing. It will kind of evolve and get better. So here's an example of what a bio looks like when you've converted to a business profile. This is the Love Bomb Company, um, and I love using them as an example. Does anybody know who the Love Bomb Company is? Oh, you're gonna know, and you're gonna love them. Um, they, <laughs> when, you read, when I read their bio, you'll understand why. Um, but you have, there's five factors that you wanna consider in your bio. Your name is this big, bold section right here. That can be anything you want. It doesn't actually have to be your name. It can be anything you want. And your username, which I actually cropped off in this screenshot, is in this case, it's at the Love Bomb Co. is their username. So your username is how you are known on Instagram. When you post, interact, comment, do anything, you're known as your username. The username and name are the only two searchable criteria on Instagram. Everything else means nothing for search. So if someone's looking for a keyword for your business, that keyword needs to be in one of those two criteria. If you were a photographer, your name better say photographer. If you do anything in the B2B space, whatever that industry or niche is, that better be a keyword in your name or your username. Because if someone's going to Instagram and looking for that, they are not gonna find it unless it's in your name or your username. And you can change those anytime you want. I don't recommend changing your username frequently because you actually break all your backlinks if you do that, if you have a lot of things linked. But you can change your username as many times as you want. But pick one, stick with it, and then change your name accordingly. I change mine frequently. Right now I think it says Jen Herman, Instagram expert. I'll change it to blogger, speaker, whatever I'm trying to focus on if I'm running campaigns or those sorts of things that I want to be found for. Your profile photo. Realize that your profile <coughs> photo gets to be about this big. So what looks really cool as a photo is completely not recognizable when it's this big scrolling through somebody's phone. So look and see what your profile photo looks like when it's shrunk down. Think about, does it lose the context? Is there text in there that is now no longer legible? Those sorts of things. Really think about having a good profile photo. You also want that to try to be consistent with what you have on other platforms. If you're new to Instagram, which most of you are not, but if you are new to Instagram, your audience doesn't know you're there, and because it's such a limited search parameter, you want them to immediately recognize you in a search result. They're gonna recognize you if they recognize your profile photo from your Facebook or your Twitter or your Pinterest or your LinkedIn. So you wanna to try to keep them similar, if not the same. The bio description is in here. You have 250 characters. It's a lot, but not a lot. You want your bio to say who you are, what you do, why you're awesome, and why they should follow you. So four major kind of factors. Oh, do we, you guys all have the handbooks, right? Thank I just realized, I'm like, well, yeah, we're going through all this stuff, it's in a workbook. <laughs> Um, so you have those kind of key factors that you really want to be thinking about when you write your bio. Now, in terms of a good bio versus a bad bio, a good bio has personality. It's going to showcase something of value. It's going to make people want to connect with it. The first and only time anyone will ever really read your bio is the first time they come to your profile. The first time they find you. Once they know who you are, they will probably never read your bio again. So your bio is your 30 second elevator pitch. Your bio is your first impression. If it sucks, you suck and you've lost a potential client. I know, I don't pull punches. <laughs> so you really want it to be fun, have personality. You know, we were talking about this um, earlier today in one of the groups that I was talking with. You know, we tend to, when we get on social media, we kind of like strip all of our personality. We want to be this professional, well put together, you know, not offend anybody, say everything as nicely as possible. And when you do that, you lose people. You become corporate. You become very rehearsed. You want to have some personality, which is why I love this example. The Love Bomb Company has, boom, you just got loved. That's their tagline. But it says, we spread love Monday through Sunday, so you know what they're creating. They're creating content. They're sharing love Monday through Sunday. They have products of positivity with a touch of profanity. And this mm -hmm. is why I love them. <laughs> So for example, they have all these little things, like I have a coffee mug that says, today I'm gonna to manifest some cool ass shit. So it's motivational, but it's you know kind of quirky and fun and it has profanity mixed in. And they do a lot with like moms, a lot of their customers are moms. 
moms. So you'll see they, they use a lot of user generated content and regram a lot of stuff from their customers. So a lot of their content has a lot of moms and kids and entrepreneurs and that they know who their target audience is and they are just giving them more content over and over and over again. Then they have hashtag the love bomb co. Just so you know, a new feature that just rolled out like last week, maybe two weeks ago now, is that you can put the clickable hashtags in your bio. Yay! No, not yay. Yay if you're using your branded hashtag. If someone clicks on that hashtag, you want them to go to more of your own stuff. If you go and put hashtag florist and send them to a bazillion posts of everybody else in the world, you just lost them. Don't send them away. So everyone's like, oh great, I can use clickable hashtags, and they went and dumped five hashtags in their bios. I'm like, oh, stop. Do it if you have a branded hashtag. If you have people that are creating content on behalf of your brand, user-generated content, use that hashtag, because by all means, now you have a whole gallery to send people to with more content that represents your brand, even though you didn't necessarily create it. So that is, and then they have the 15% off now with the arrow pointing to uh, their URL. On the hashtags, uh, do those work for search now? Yeah. So putting a hashtag in your bio has no impact on search. Um, because you put, that may change, that may be why they've rolled this out, but at this point there's absolutely no advantage to using any specific keyword hashtag in a bio because it's not going to have you show up in search in any additional capacity. Um, but so they have this kind of call to action here to say the 15% off now and go to that link. So that is a good bio. Tells who they are, what they do, why they're awesome, why you should follow them, and a call to action. So think about that. Use emojis, personality, all those sorts of things that really talk to what makes a good brand. Here's a couple other examples I just want to show you guys really quickly. Um, Jill Boudreau, she does um, real estate back east. And her bio literally says, uh, Wellesley's premier realtor, top 20 Coldwell banker, four children, three skydives, two marathons, one life and a real estate job I love. So she's a person. She's a realtor. So she's talking about who she is as a person, about her family and her interests. She makes her relatable. She's not just a real estate agent. She's something more than that, and she's talking about that in her profile. The Dollar Shave Club has, Dollar Shave Club makes and delivers everything you need to look, feel, and shave like a million bucks without paying for it. Try the club today. Simple, short, sweet, tells you who they are, what they do. Adobe changes theirs every month. They run a campaign on Instagram every month with a different theme that they use examples um, and people get regrammed and all that kind of stuff and they create content around that theme. So every month they change out their bio to reference what that theme is. So you can change your bio as often as you want. Use it to tell part of the story. You can absolutely use that to your advantage. All right, so now who wants to volunteer? We're gonna analyze your bio. All right, you go first. <laughs> She jumped on there. She didn't have her yeah, phone in her hand. She was like, "Hey!" <laughs> and yeah, we have to use your phone because my phone's live streaming, so I can't use mine. Okay, so she is at Think Media Consulting. If anybody else wants to look and pull that up and follow her while you're at it, because we're all about sharing the love. So she has um, Think Media Consulting. She's a local service. So she provides social and digital marketing strategies that drive revenue, help our clients grow, and think big. And then she has the uh, at Think Media 16. Um, and is that for Twitter. Twitter? It's got the little chick. Yeah. Okay. So, not bad. A decent example. So, she has who they are and what they do that they provide social and digital marketing strategies that drive revenue, help our clients grow, and think big. But you're not really telling much more. Like, why should somebody follow you? What are they going to get by following you? Are they getting educational tips? Are they getting fun tips? Why is anything of value to them in here? So you can add something like that. And my personal thing is never send people to another profile unless that's your dominant profile for a really important reason. So having your Twitter handle on here is not a bad thing, but now you're, you're encouraging them to leave Instagram. And we want to keep them on Instagram. So by doing that, you're saying, oh, well, we're on Instagram, but you know we're better over on Twitter. And so now you're like, they're going to want, well, what are they doing on Twitter? And then they're going to leave your Instagram and kind of forget about it. So we want to keep them on Instagram. We want to welcome them into this family. So I usually try to avoid putting anything that profiles to another social media platform. And because it doesn't specifically say Twitter, you know, I can kind of make that assumption, but not everybody can. Um, 
if anybody watched the Congress hearings yeah. with Mark Zuckerberg, we know how little people really know. We are a very unique audience of people who know what's happening on the, the online world. Most of the world doesn't know anything. So without describing that, they're going to be like, what is this? Like, what, why is there a little chick? And what does this mean? So I would even just take that all together and use that space for something more relevant. Um, you can do, um, like for example, with Jill's where she's got the broken out like this. Um, iPhone users have a little bit of a harder time. You actually have to create it in a note, copy, and then paste it in here. You can't do the formatting in Instagram. Someday they'll change it, but they haven't yet. Android can. Android, you can go in and hit return. Um, you just want to make sure there's no space at the end of the line. So you want the last character and then hit return. If there's a space after any punctuation or anything, it won't keep the formatting for some reason because the world is complicated and annoying. But you're making good use of highlights, so good job on that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and it is a pretty account. So she's doing a lot of things really good. Um, this is, thank you for volunteering because this was a good example to pull up. But I would like to see you put a bit more personality um, and description into your bio. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So the reason that I haven't done that is because it's now branded to me. Okay. Does that still work? If I still Who's the it? face of the brand? Who's the name of the brand? Is it a big company? Is it just you? It's, it is a small company. It's my company. Well, and that's where, like, especially being here in San Diego, we all have a vibe, right? Like, I don't, I don't belong in San Diego. This is what I look like 24-7. I wear foreign shields, and I'm always overdressed. It's just who I am. And my brand, Tuesday Shoes Days, is a new thing I'm doing on my Instagram because everyone wants to know what shoes I'm wearing every day. That's my brand. So there's people out there who are, you know, the surfer laid back kind of people. And then there's the people who are maybe more military-centric. And then, there, you know, we, you still have a vibe to your business, even if it's not branded 100% to you. Your brand has a style, a voice, a tone that when people connect with, whether it's you or one of your employees, whether they call you or meet with you, they should see that personality online manifested in real life. They should mirror each other. So whatever your brand style is, think about what that tone is and translate that into your bio. Okay. All right, so now I told you we're gonna talk about the algorithm. Um, just to show of hands, because I can't let this thing die. Did anybody hear and see the new Instagram algorithm in February? All the information, oh my God, I love you guys. I've got a couple hands, but you're, you're, you're tentatively raising them. <laughs> so if you, do, if, if you do want to see the truth, you can go look at my Instagram at Jens underscore trends and look for the post that says stop the madness, because it's all lies. Oh my god, you guys, I went on a mission for like three days. I lost three whole days of my life trying to combat this stupid thing. Um, because it is not Facebook. Facebook did change their algorithm in January. January 11th, pff, the world blew up. And Mark Zuckerberg came out and made all these changes and announcements and the whole world freaked out. Some artist who is a, you know, she does, you know, kind of calligraphy and, and illustration type things, who's never had a word anywhere on her entire website about any sort of social media advice, training, or expertise, wrote a blog post and told the world about all the new Instagram algorithm changes. It went viral overnight, and I mean viral. Like the entire world viral overnight, and it still won't die. So, she came up with all these things, and I'm not going to go through them in great detail. You can read the post, Stop the Madness, on my Instagram, and I, I combat every single one of her points. They were all not true, except for one, which wasn't even necessarily true, but it was like an old statement from like two years ago. So I want to just clarify and make sure everybody understands how the Instagram algorithm works, that you all understand, because this will be important if you want to drive sales and leads and conversions. You need to understand how the algorithm works so you can use it to your advantage. So... There are three areas on Instagram that use an algorithm. The feed, when someone's scrolling through and seeing content, that's the algorithm everyone talks about. There's also an algorithm on hashtag searches. Anyone heard the term shadow ban? Okay, it doesn't exist. <laughs> if you haven't heard of me before, just go Google and look at YouTube for shadow ban and look for my videos. I also have, actually, if you really want a good, if you really want to get to know my personality, go find my YouTube video in response to that new Instagram algorithm. By about the 12 minute mark, it's very colorful, profane language. Uh, for the rest of the hour. It's, you don't have children or elderly around. It doesn't go well. Uh, shadow banning does not exist. There is an algorithmic sort on hashtags now. 
So there is some preferential content selection based on you as a user, meaning if we all go look at the same hashtag, we're going to see different results because there's going to be an algorithmic sort to cater content to each individual user. And stories do have a bit of an algorithm, and I'm going to show you what that looks like as well. So the Instagram feed. The algorithm is based predominantly on individual interactions. I reiterate, it is not Facebook. It is its own algorithm. It does not work the same way that Facebook works. So if you always like things with cars, and if you always like things with dogs, and if you always like things with babies, you are each going to see content related to what you interact with, regardless of who's following. If they know that you always like babies, they're gonna show you more babies from anybody you follow. If you always interact with these five people, they are always gonna show up at the top of your feed. Always. If you never interact with these five people, they're going to get buried in the content. So as a business, as a brand, you can't go out there like Facebook and make a popular post and get more reach. That's not how it works. You need to make sure that your customers, your followers are actually interacting with your content so that they continue to see it higher in their own feeds. The popularity factor is minimal on Instagram compared to Facebook. So it's much more important to how your community actually interacts with your content. So you, and we'll talk through some of the things that you can do to actually focus on that, but you wanna create the content that is gonna get more engagement and drive their personal interaction with your content. So there is now, there, literally the day after I finally wrote a blog post about the Instagram algorithm, literally the next day Instagram announced to change the algorithm. I'm like, every time. Um, they did make a change. So previous to last month, um, if you did go into Instagram, you might log on and see something from like three days ago at the top of your feed. That is less likely to happen now. They're putting more of an emphasis on recent content. No, it is not going back to chronological. But it is trying to put a bigger emphasis on more recent content. Now, as a marketer, that's going to impact you. Because if you're only posting twice a week, and you posted on Monday, and your audience, let's say somebody didn't log in until Thursday, so now it's been three, four days since you shared that post, they're less likely to see it, even if they always interact with your content, because it's not recent. Whereas last month, that post would have probably showed up really high in their feed because they always interact with your content. Now that's less likely to happen. So you need to think strategically, not create more content, but think strategically about when you're posting. Know when your audience is online, know when they're active, know when they're actually interacting with your content to make sure you're putting content out at the right times to hit the majority of your audience. Your activity does, in a small factor, impact reach. Meaning, Instagram wants you to be active on Instagram. If you log into Instagram and post a photo and you bail, and you never interact with other people's content, and you barely check once and then go respond to the comments and maybe not even that many of them, Instagram's going to reduce your reach of your post because you're not a good Instagrammer. However, and this can be a bit of a game, if you know you're gonna post on Wednesday, log on on Tuesday and like a bunch of content. I hate gaming the system and I did not just tell you to do that, but it kind of works. But if you log on and like a bunch of content before you post something, when you post it, you will usually get higher engagement. Because Instagram wants to see you being active. Try to be active regularly. Don't try to just, you know, the day before you post something. But the more you're in there and you're actively interacting with other people, commenting, liking, scrolling, then when you upload, they're like, hey, you're a good person. You're always on the platform. Great. We're going to show more people your post. So you tend to get more uh, reward if you are more active. So the Instagram feed algorithm is not impacted by story interactions, meaning if your customer or your audience member always looks at your stories, always, 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 and they're sending you direct messages and they love you, it has no impact on the feed. Your feed content will not show up any differently in the algorithmic sort for that user based on how they interact with your stories. It is, and this is actually debunking all that, a lot of the stuff in that article. It is not impacted by response times. Meaning, as long as you're conversational with your audience, whether you respond two seconds, five minutes, or five days after, it doesn't matter when you respond. It's about having a community and a relationship with your audience, so you should be striving to interact with all comments that are relevant of any sort, but it doesn't matter how quickly you respond. That is not important. 
You can edit and delete whatever you want. Instagram does not care. It does not impact the algorithm. And hashtag usage. We're going to talk about hashtags. Hashtag usage doesn't matter. Yes. Um, so would you recommend you do stories? Because mm -hmm. they are attractive. They pop up there and it catches the eye. Yep. Would you recommend them using more as a, a time and space to refer them to your page um, rather than just posting or speaking and addressing your audience? You can do whatever you want with your stories. I recommend using them. Do not look at my own profile as an example because I'm horrible at sharing stories. Aside from today, I have like probably 20 up there because I always share when I do conferences and stuff. Um, but you should be using stories as much as you can. And now with the highlights feature, which actually allows you to take any previous story and save it to an album, which is called a highlight, which shows up just below your bio, um, which is what I was saying. She's got really good use of her highlights. Um, you can then repurpose them. So they live on forever as a highlight album. So you can use anything, but yeah, absolutely. Do cross-reference. Like I'll do that and I'll say, hey, new blog post is out. You know, go click on the link in my bio. And I put it in my stories and I put it in, in my my actual profile feed. Then I had a post that I announced yesterday with a bunch of updates that Instagram has released in the last few days. So I put a thing in my story and said, have you seen all the updates? Go check my regular profile for the update. So you can do that kind of cross promotion and that sort of thing, but there's there's no impact in terms of an algorithmic store, but you should absolutely be taking advantage of both. But know where your audience is. If your audience doesn't reply and interact and view your stories, then don't waste your time on them. If your audience loves stories, you'd better get the strategy going because you want to be where your audience is. Uh, in terms of hashtags, you can use up to 30. We're going to talk about hashtag strategy. You can use more than five. There is no rule. Instagram loves hashtags. They're not going to punish you for using them. And just to restate so that everybody understands, again, unlike Facebook, the Instagram algorithm does not hide any content. Nothing is hidden. It's only resorted, meaning if somebody scrolled far enough back in their feed, they would see every post of every person they follow. They would not actually miss anything. It's not being hidden. It's simply being resorted. That will probably change someday in the future, but for right now, that doesn't matter. Can I ask, when you say yeah. resorted, is it still in a historical like, content? Like it, in order of yeah, it's not chronological, so it's going to be a smorgasbord of where they would have to find it. And I'm trying to look and see where we're at on time because I'm going to have to talk really fast. We still have some stuff to get through. Um, so the hashtag algorithm is based on individuals, users, activities. I already kind of told you that if you go to a hashtag search, it's going to sort content based on individuals. It's not going to necessarily rank based on popularity or those sorts of things. Um, and so what shows up in the top posts versus the recent posts on Instagram? Top posts are based on popularity of followers and non-followers. So if all of your followers love your content but non-followers don't, which means you're probably not using hashtags because nobody outside your audience is finding them, then you're probably not going to rank as a top post. So that hashtag search is based on the, the results are based on a popularity of followers and non-followers. And it has to do with timing and saturation. If you use hashtag love and there's like a bazillion posts with hashtag love, good luck. Within like a second of posting, you're buried in the archives. It's never gonna happen. So it's really about the timing, you know, what time of the day, what season, month, week is that content, you know, maybe flooded with more on that hashtag or not. Those things play a factor um, in that sort as well. So for Instagram stories, um, the algorithm is really based on the placement in the feed. So when you go to your, your account and you see all the bubbles across the top of all everyone's stories, whoever you interact with most is going to go to the top or essentially the leftmost bubble. So that is algorithmically sorted based on your interactions with their stories, not with their regular content. They don't impact each other. So if you're always watching these three people's stories, you're always going to see their three bubbles at the top of your feed whenever they have a new story. And live videos tend to get a preference as well. So if someone's going live, like I'm on live on Instagram right now, I am more likely to have my bubble more to the left of the feed saying, Jen's Trends is live because they want people to tune into those live videos. Okay, so what's working right now? Less content, not more. We, these people in this room, and we as marketers have ruined social media. We create so much content that they have to create algorithms because we make a mess of the situation. Oh, you're not seeing it? Great, let me double my content load. Oh, so let's see, let me triple my content load. Next thing you know, you're posting six times a day and nobody cares, right?
right? You don't care. You as a follower, you are unfollowing the companies that are doing what you're doing. So don't create more content, create less content. I want better content. I want the best content you can imagine. We were talking about this out at lunch. I only post sometimes once a week. <clears throat> sometimes not even at all. But guess what? When I post, oh, Jen's back. What's going on? Why is she posting? And all of a sudden my engagement goes up. Instagram goes, hey, she hasn't posted in a while. Great, let's give her a little bump. My audience hasn't seen me in a while. They're more eager to look at what I'm sharing. And I'm not forcing content for the sake of a content strategy. I'm putting out content that is relevant and timely, which means my audience goes, ooh, that's good. I like it. I'm going to comment. I'm going to share it. I'm going to go post that to my story. I'm going to go talk about it. Because it's valuable to them because it's actually quality content. I'm not just going, well, it's Wednesday. It's sunny. Hmm, let's, let's share a palm tree. Really? Mm -hmm. Who cares? Unless it's actually relevant to something. So make sure that you're creating less content, more of it. Instagram stories, we talked about Instagram stories. You can use a ton of different things I don't have time to go into. And yes, that is my daughter. I can't not show her off, I know. That was actually a little while ago, but she's still that cute. Um, but use boomerangs. There's a bunch of new features. There's a super zoom, which traumatizes me whenever I watch a super zoom. If you've never done it, rah! that's what happens. <laughs> um, the new Focus just came out yesterday. I got it this morning, yes! Um, but it takes a face and it blurs out the background like as if the photo was taken on DSLR. So it's a kind of way to up your ante with your selfies on Instagram stories. Um, all the, the filters and the stickers, now there's five different font options that you can use. So there's a ton of things that you can do. If you are a business profile and you have over 10,000 followers, you get the swipe up link which both of these are using, and you can swipe up. You can put any link to anywhere in the internet world on a story. That is your way to actually get clickable links anywhere on Instagram. It's only in Instagram stories, only if your business profile with over 10,000 followers. So while I never advocate for you know focusing on a metric, if you're close to 10,000, get there, because then you have the links. If you're only at 300 people, it, it's gonna take you a while, sorry. Um, but that is a great way, and then if you're using the Instagram highlights, when you save those, those links are stored. So this is great if you have products and you can create a product catalog with the link specifically to that product page that can live on in a highlight that way. So there's a lot of ways you can use that creatively. Um, which, story highlights, just told you about that. This is what they look like. They do not look like this. People have created these little cover photos, but they're these bubbles that show up underneath. You can create, I think you can create as many as you want. I think I got up to like trying like 22 before I was like, I give up um, and I didn't get stopped. The one that you most recently added or created content for automatically moves to the leftmost bubble, so they will resort as you go through. You can name them anything you want, but they do get truncated, so you want to try to keep them to less than 12 characters if possible. I think 12 is the kind of the magic number. Um, and four are what show up, obviously, so if there's a fifth one or more than that, it kind of cuts off. So if you can keep it to four, that's kind of the best way to do it. Um, but if you do more, that's fine. Just realize that people have to scroll, and they may not always see those. On Instagram, in general, photos are the highest performing content. It's Instagram. People love photos. Accept it. Videos are getting better. People are kind of adapting to them, but videos still are very low in comparison to photos. And carousels, which are the multi-photo albums, um, those posts tend to perform less in terms of engagement. I think, and I, this is just total hypothesis, it's because if someone's taken the time to swipe through and look at photos, it hasn't crossed their mind to double tap to like. So they may actually be engaging with your content, they're just not giving you a physical like or a comment, so it's not something that's being tracked as a metric. So it's not that they're necessarily performing less, it's just harder to track because if people are you know, focusing on other engagement tactics with it and that's not measurable. Um, organic versus sterile. Um, so these are organic. Sterile is your boring product in a boring box on a boring white shelf that looks like it was staged for a catalog. No! Nobody wants to see that. We want to see interaction. We want to see people. If you can put a human component into your photo, you are always going to get more engagement. And it can be a hand. It can be a hand and a foot. It doesn't have to be a face, but when you put a human in the photo, you're always going to get more engagement. Mostly. Colors, pops of colors, different you know, ways to stand out in the feed. Super busy photos do not perform well. You want something that's a clear subject to focus. When you can drive them to a clear subject, it's going to usually perform better for you. 
This one I love, as an example, let's assume she's trying to sell you the watch. She's actually a fashion blogger, but let's assume she's trying to sell you that watch. It's not a watch in a box, on a shelf, meh. It's, oh, it's the watch and the bracelet. Oh, and that sweater and oh, the shoes. Oh my God, I need them all. I, you just sold an entire lifestyle to me by trying to sell me a watch. That's something I can relate to. That's something I can connect to. I'm her target audience, so it works for me. It may not work for you, but know who your target audience is and create this content that connects with them on an emotional level. Um, targeted hashtags, and we're going to talk about hashtags in just a second, and business profiles, we've already talked about that. All right, so really quickly, volunteer. Who wants me to, okay, I'm going to look at your content. You don't look at Perfect. Okay. So, at get underscore to underscore the point. That's what we're going to look at really quick. At get underscore to underscore the point. So it's the point, she says, not your ordinary meeting and event space. The point is a California-style off-site location located in Mission Bay, California. Get to the point.io. Decent point. Good. Okay. So content is... It's kind of hard for you guys to see. Um, it's a lot of the event space. There's photos outdoors. You can tell it's over Mission Bay. There's a wedding photo, um, all the different venue spaces. There's a baby. There's a person working. There's a happy holidays. So in general, not bad. It's pretty good. Um, lots of color. You're showing your venue space. You're highlighting what's going on, like what you offer in different capacities. You're showing it in different settings, so it's not everything's all a wedding setting. You're seeing all the different you know, settings, so it's great. I can look at it and go, oh, I can see my party being there. Um, it doesn't look like you're posting a ton. And if we go back and we're looking at happy holidays, you know, being maybe five, six rows down, so you're not posting frequently, um, that's okay, like I just said. But I would like to see you post maybe a little bit more. Um, I would like to see better lighting in some of these photos. Some of them have great shots of the venue, but they're kind of dark. So go in and edit your photos, bump up your brightness, really allow them to pop out and see. You can add more contrast, add more saturation, so it diminishes the fact that you brightened it and have whitewashed everything. But the brightness is gonna just make it a little bit easier to look at everything. Um, Cause yeah, you've got a couple in here that are kind of dark to look at. Do more of the outside ones. Again, you know, you've got beautiful San Diego weather, all those sorts of things, but you've got the palm trees and all the different settings. So if anyone's looking at that content, she's got a pretty good content feed, you guys. Okay, get more reach and followers, and I'm running really low on time. Hashtag strategies. Um, 10 to 20 hashtags per post is my recommendation. You can do up to 30. You want to use a combination of your own branded, or sorry, your own custom branded hashtags. So whatever's representative of your brand, I use hashtag Jen's Trends and hashtag Learn From Jen. Those are my two hashtags. Use anything trendy or themed, something that's going on that's relevant and timely. Content related hashtags. Um, industry related hashtags. So whatever your industry niche, that sort of thing, you want to be able to utilize those. This example up here is from the Marriott Marquis downtown San Diego. And they've only used like six hashtags, but they've hit all of these categories of six hashtags. So I'd recommend more. But they have this beautiful photo of their pool and the trees at the hotel. And they have hashtag Marriott Marquis SD, custom branded. They have hashtag San Diego. That's kind of, you know, you can look at that as either industry or, or content. Hashtag Labor Day Weekend, that's trendy or themed. Hashtag Summer, trendy or themed. Hashtag Pool is the content, there's a pool in the photo. And hashtag Vacation. So using just those hashtags, they hit all those categories. So you can use more than that, but you look at that as an example to where you can kind of pull from what's in your photo, what's in your industry, what's relevant to your target audience. This is my super secret recipe that I tell everybody. Um, I believe I have this in your worksheets. If not, feel free to grab a screenshot of this. I also have blog posts on this topic. It's in Instagram for Business for Dummies if you want to get the book. So basically, you want to combine four to five popular hashtags. Popular, I mean anything over 500,000 into the millions. Try not to go too high into the millions because like I said, you'll disappear within about a split second. You want to use popular hashtags? You want to use five to six moderately popular. These are specific to your industry, a little bit more targeted. So instead of using hashtag photographer, you might use hashtag San Diego wedding photographer. That would be a moderately popular because there's a lot of them here. Uh, two to five niche specific. The, those two to five are going to be those ones that are super, super targeted. Hint, these are the ones where people actually find you. So these niche specific hashtags are what your audience is actually looking for in keywords. A great example I have of this is duct tape, the actual duct tape. 
And they were using all these things like hashtag, you know, like DIYs and all these, or they were using all these hashtags related to like the, uh, the actual tape and the product and the things like that. And they weren't getting a lot of traction. When they started thinking about who their target audience is, their target audience are the home remodelers, the people who are in the, you know, Home Depot on the weekend doing all these DIY projects. And they're, you know, people who are looking for quick fixes because they got kids running around and they just got to slap some duct tape on that cabinet to hold it together. They started thinking about their audience and using targeted hashtags related to like the DIY industry and the homeowner industry and the parental industry and all these sorts of things. And their hashtag engagement went through the roof because they started putting hashtags out that their audience was actually looking for, not what they thought they should be looking for. So you want to find out what your audience is doing. If, again, let's use the photographer example. If someone's looking for a photographer and you work in San Diego, use San Diego photographer hashtags. That's what someone's going to go and look at a hashtag search for. So if you can create content that they're likely to actually go look at and is highly targeted to what you do, that's where you can actually get people to find you and actually connect with you, whether it's that contact button, following you, sending you a direct message, that sort of thing. That's how you're going to drive conversions. But um, you need to make sure that you're using those in conjunction with all of these to get to the top post. So that algorithmic sort and hashtags, you need to use all of these because what ends up happening is and you show up as a top post in these niche specific ones. So there's those top nine right now that's changing. They're testing something, another update coming. Um, but right now you see nine of the top posts for a hashtag search. Those top nine are based on popularity, which we talked about in the algorithmic sort for followers and non-followers, timing and all those sorts of things. So if you show up as a top nine for your targeted hashtag search, the keyword that someone's specifically looking for them, a solution you provide, if you're top nine, chances are they're going to go look at your content. Because they're going to see those nine first and interact with those before they look at any of the content below the fold. So that's how you actually get people to connect with you using hashtags. All right, so use your worksheet after the conference. I want you to go through and think about what all your key hashtags are. I put spaces in there for you to fill in what you think your popular, moderately popular, and uh, niche specific hashtags are. So you can go through and do that after the fact and you'll have a a running tally. You can even go and dump those into a note on your phone, but then you can go copy into Instagram, paste, and dump them right in. Make your life super easy. Okay, another way that you can grow your audience, this is one of my favorite things to do, is to stock hashtags that are related to my target audience. Meaning, you guys are on a social media conference. Most of you are marketers, so you may not necessarily be my target audience, but you may also be because maybe you want to learn more about Instagram marketing to help your business or your clients if you run an agency. So what I do is every time there's a social media conference, not just in San Diego, but anywhere, whether it's you know inbound or any of those big conferences as well, I go through and I stock the crap out of that hashtag. I go in like four or five times a day if it's a bigger one, once a day if it's a smaller one, and I scroll and double tap, scroll and double, I'm, I'm getting like carpal tunnel in my thumb by the end of the day. Why? Because everybody at that conference is my target audience. And now I've just shown up in all of their notifications. And they go, here's this Jen's Trends, it's just like my five photos. They come over, they see my profile, which we've set up to be a first impression to tell how awesome you are. And they go, oh, I should follow her. And I instantly get, I didn't have to comment. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to antagonize them with direct messages. I didn't have to harass them. I just liked a bunch of their posts. And they're my target audience. And they go, hey, she's kind of smart. I like her. I'm going to follow her. So you can get anywhere from a handful to hundreds of followers using this method, depending on the hashtag and depending on the relevancy of the audience. And even if it's only a dozen people, those are a dozen targeted clients. Those are people who are very likely to convert at some point. So you've not grown your audience by buying fake followers or getting a whole bunch of people from a contest that are irrelevant to you. They're highly targeted followers. The same thing works for hobby hashtags. If you maybe don't have conferences in your industry, figure out what hobbies, you know, if it's the mom space or a parental space, and they have you know, certain things that your target audience is likely to participate in, whether they do knitting clubs or book clubs or play dates or things geographically located you know, around parks or, or um, venues, like whether it's a SeaWorld thing or that sort of stuff. Figure out what people are doing on hashtags for hobbies. You can do the exact same thing on those. You can use contests. Um, be clear it's a contest or a giveaway. That is absolutely paramount important. Provide a relevant prize. We're long past today's giving away iPads, you guys. I think you guys know that. But if your business is, you know, if you're a florist, then give away a, a coupon or a free bouquet or a free Mother's Day arrangement. Do something that's relevant that a target would actually want to win. Therefore, you know it's somebody who would actually potentially want to work with you as a customer. 
clearly state the requirements to enter, I highly recommend you do two things. Follow your account and comment with two people in the comments. Tag two people in the comments of that contest. Why? They have to follow you to enter. New follower if they're not already. And they have to tag two people in the comments. So those two people, if they want to enter the contest, they have to follow you and tag two people. It becomes a spider web effect that now all of a sudden you have all these people following your account and they're all likely targeted followers because you're offered a relevant prize and it was referred to them by their friends. You didn't harass anybody. So it's a great way to build your audience. Again, the first time you do it, you may only get one or two people out of it. Great. Build momentum. Do it again next month. Do it again the next month. It'll gain momentum. Make sure you state the deadlines and terms. These are all legal things. If you go to genstrends.com and search for Instagram contest, I have two blog posts that give way, way more detail on this whole topic. Create a custom hashtag specifically for that contest and promote the contest multiple times. Do it before the contest, at the contest start, during the contest, and right before the contest ends. This verbiage is in your handout. It is required. I lost my video. There we go, we're back. I want to make sure it doesn't, it, at the end I get kicked off at 59 minutes and like 58 seconds, so I want to make sure I save it, so I'm kind of watching the screen to make sure it, I get to save this. Um, this verbiage is in your handout. It is required. Actually, Facebook requires this too, if you didn't already know that, but they do. Um, this is basically the only requirement by Instagram, is that you're relieving them of any responsibility associated with it, so you do need to include that verbiage. Put all your terms and conditions and, and entry requirements, and then just put this little verbiage Save it in note, copy, paste, and just drop it in when you run a contest. Um, use all the hashtags in stories, or all the different tags in, in stories. So you can use hashtags, you can use location tags, and you can use user tags. So you can actually use them as stickers for the location of a hashtag if you want, or you can just type them in. If you create a location tag, when they tap on it, it says see location, and it actually takes them to that person's Instagram account. So if it's your actual business, it will take them to your business. Encourage your customers to do the same thing. And then you have the hashtag here, if they click on the hashtag, it's going to take them to the hashtag search for that. Instagram stories do show up in hashtag searches. So you may find you have an Instagram story set and it's five stories and you have one saw 23 people, the next one saw 20 people, and the next one after that saw 286 people. And you're like, whoa, how did that happen? Because it probably showed up in a story in a search and then everybody <coughs> saw it from there. And they may have continued through to see the rest of yours or they may have bumped off. If you're using usernames, um, the at, make sure there's an underscore. It will always populate the options down here. It's easier just to choose the bubble down here that, that the person you want to tag. All hashtags and usernames must be underlined. If they're not underlined, just like everything else in the internet world, it's not clickable. So you can put at gens underscore trends, but if it's not underlined, I won't get the notification and it won't actually be hyperlinked to my account. So always make sure that you've got that underline going. Um, they are doing a new feature that is currently being tested that is basically a precursor to regramming natively within the app. Yay! I know, we could all be jumping up for joy. I, I know, right? it's super exciting, you guys. Try to control your, your excitement. Right now, everyone has this option. If you go to your settings on your profile, there's an option to allow others to reshare. It is defaulted to on. If you do not want people to share your content, make sure you turn that off. Even if you don't have the reshare feature, other people do, so this is enabled on your profile right now. I recommend as a business you leave it on because what happens is somebody can come in and say, I want to regram your post. So they take a post from your profile, your regular gallery, and they're regramming it to their story. They're not regramming it to their profile. It's always at this point regrammed to a story. And when they do that, it has a see post option. They can tap on that and it takes them to the post. So for example, I do a lot of educational posts, news, updates, announcements about Instagram. People could take that and share that to their story, and now anybody looking at their story could sit, tap on the post and come right to my profile and see my post and get all the information. So it's a great way to get new exposure, new leads, new clients that way. So you, if as a business, I would recommend you leave this on. This will most likely roll out. It's currently in a test phase. I am pretty sure this will be rolled out in the near future. Um, beware, the person whose post got shared does not currently get a notification. So if you share somebody's post, they don't know that you shared it. There's no notification to that person, unless you go in and put at so-and-so with a clickable um, link that way. Okay, so to get more sales, we're gonna wrap up. I know we, we're like not gonna have time for questions. I'm sorry, but I'm happy to help and talk afterwards if you guys wanna um, meet outside. So to drive conversions, 
Build a community first. Instagram is about community. Mari Smith talked about the same thing. It's relationships first. It's having a community. It's having your audience live, present, and interactive with you. The more you are a person and less of a business, the more you're gonna build that community. Even if you are a company with multiple people, be a personality. Create educational, entertaining, and relevant content to your audience. Don't create fluff for the sake of creating content. Create content that they actually care about. Don't push your sales in more than 40% of your posts. I know everyone does like the 80-20 and the 75-25 and all these. I throw 40 out there just to give you guys a number. You can do more promotional posts, but I can, like, I can take an example like have a beautiful sunset photo and you can turn that around and say, it has absolutely no relevance, but it's a beautiful sunset and I wanna share it. What can I do? Well, you can turn and say, hey, it's been a super busy week. We're getting ready to launch our new service next week. We can't wait to share it with you guys. But right now, we're all going to take a quick pause and just enjoy this quiet sunset and relax over the weekend. We'll see you all back here on Monday for the product release. So you just tease something for next week without being promotional. So there's ways that you can promote your content and your service without being like, hey, billboard for sale. So think about ways you can be creative with that interaction. Uh, mix up your calls to action. Don't just always say link in the bio. Push people to those contact buttons. Have them come into your store. Offer a flash sale or discount code for shopping online. Use different calls to action. If your call to action is always click on the link in the bio, people get tired of it. They tune it out and they're not going to pay attention. And use emojis. Use capital letters. Use different things. Put the, the call to action in the first paragraph. Put it in the third paragraph. Mix up where you're putting them so it kind of catches people off guard. And finally, you guys, have fun. I, like I said, I could talk to you for six hours about Instagram strategies, but really, it's when you kind of wing it and you go out there and create something super fun, and those are the posts that get the most interaction. Why? Because you stop trying so hard. It's fun. It's a fun platform. People want to have fun. So if you're out there creating fun content and having fun, your audience will too, and you'll be rewarded for it. Thank you so much. We probably have like a minute or two for questions. I'm happy to take those, but I'm going to sign off on here. Thank you, guys. I want to be able to save this. Save it.